Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is the complete guide for setting up your Microsoft Flight Sim and Discord to participate in live multiplayer flights. So step by step guide in the sim itself on your Xbox or PC. Then we'll jump onto the Discord later and show you the settings there in case you want to participate in live chat. I'm also going to show you how to load in flight plans on the PC and the Xbox, so this will be a complete guide. So okay, let's not dilly dally, look at that beautiful weather we've got over London. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so let's start off with the first step. I'm on the main menu in Microsoft Flight Sim. This will be for both Xbox and PC. Go to your options. And then go to general options. And in general options, go to data. So you want to ensure that online functionality is turned on. And multiplayer is turned on. Couple of, well, there's a caveat here. I'm on PC recording this. I own Microsoft Flight Sim, the store ed uh, edition, uh, Steam edition, rather, of Microsoft Flight Sim. All I need to do on the Steam edition on PC is turn multiplayer on. I can participate in multiplayer flights. On the Xbox, this is a different story. Some of you may not know this, but I believe you need Xbox Live Gold at a minimum if you want to participate in multiplayer flights. Most people opt for Game Pass on the Xbox. That's what I do on my Series S. I heard a rumour that Asobo were dropping this, and if you own Microsoft Flight Sim on the Xbox, they were meant to drop the Game Pass thing, or the Xbox Live Gold thing, and just let you participate in multiplayer flights if you own it on the Xbox platform. I don't believe that's the case at the moment. I do believe you need Game Pass or Xbox Live Gold still if you want to participate in multiplayer flights. Once you have that, they'll just turn multiplayer on and on online functionality on. We'll go back. Go back and then go to the world map. Well, there's one thing we can do on the main menu while we're here. When I, on my Discord, when I advertise, and I'll show you Discord later, when I advertise a flight, I'll normally say what server we'll be flying on. To see your server, Go to your gamer tag in the top right, and then under servers, select what server, like for example, Simhanger typically flies now on the Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia server, I believe. Sometimes I do if North Europe is fly playing up. Typically, I'll I'll choose North Europe as I get typically the best ping from that. So that's how you do it. Gamer tag top right. Whatever server the multiplayer event is advertised on, just use the drop down box here and choose which one the multiplayer flight is set up on. Another thing we can do here, last thing in Microsoft Flight Sim, go to world map. And now Wherever you're flying from on PC, I'll show you this later, you can load in a flight plan on Xbox. It might give you the flight plan in different sections so you can load a flight plan. I'm just going to choose Hudson International as my departure here. Choose which aircraft, but then go to flight conditions. Now, typically in multiplayer flights, you want this one chosen under multiplayer, all players. All players will be visible regardless of their settings unless they have set multiplayer to group only. Group only, it means that you can fly in a group, you can invite each other to that group and you won't see other players. All players, which is the 
typical setting in large multiplayer group flights means you'll be able to see all the other people that are in that multiplayer flight as well as anybody else in the world on the server you can actually change the server from here so typically for me i'll choose north europe server as our multiplayer uh, server anybody let's go to flight conditions again Anybody on that server you'll be able to see, including the people in the multiplayer flight. And once you've got that up, just set your weather, flight conditions, example. Uh, I've got it on live weather there, for example. Click on close and then click on fly and you should see other people if you have all those settings set up. Let's now jump to the Discord side of things. Okay, so over on the Discord. Now, I'm going to put a link down to our Discord down below in the description. If you just click on the link, uh, you create a new Discord account if you don't have one. Very simple to do. And then you can be in the Discord. When you join Discord, at the bottom left here, you will see your name. You can see my name here, for example. Now, I'll come to these other icons later, but this cog icon, it's user settings. Click on user settings, then you get to this new window with all these different op options. Under here, you want to go to voice and video. So it's just on the left here, user settings. Should be in the same place for you, voice and video. And here you can choose your microphone. Now if you've got a headset or some kind of mic set up or even a mic from your computer my laptop has a mic for example i've got my headphones on at the moment so i've chosen the right one here input device and your output device which will be your speakers so input you'll be your microphone obviously output speakers and you could set your volume here as well so input volumes high output volume slightly lower and then test your mic let's check so i'm going to click on let's check let's That's check my mic my and you can probably, you can probably hear, hear my, my voice, voice come back, come to, back me. to me. So I so know, I know my, my microphone, microphone works, works well. well. That was a bit disconcerting, wasn't it? So <laughs> let's check. So that's what you do. Just click let's check. Test, 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 test. test. And if you can hear yourself talking, it means your microphone's working. To get out of this menu, just click escape. So just to go over that again. Input device, you probably have different options. I've got an Oculus Rift, Oculus Vert, virtual reality, if that probably means. <laughs> Oculus Vert, it's an Oculus Rift I have. If I was wearing that, I could choose that. Headset, microphone, velocity one, yeah, okay, I can plug my headset in there. I'm not going to do it. I've got my headset plugged straight into my laptop, and I'm going to choose that microphone option. Speakers, that's my laptop speakers. And as you heard, that all works fine. Let's actually show you this. Let's talk to somebody in Discord and we'll do a proper test. Okay, so once you have those settings set up in Discord, jump into the voice chat where the uh, live multiplayer flight will be. For my own channel, on the left here, if you're new to Discord, just scroll down. There's a couple of voice chats. There's voice chat under fly together. You would think we would use that one, but our best one is group flight comms one, which is just a little bit further down. So from the top menu, just show you that again in case you want to join one of our multiplayer flights. You've got fly together. Ignore that. That's for people flying together during the week, small flight groups. This flight group, uh, sorry, group flight comms one will be the one we'll be using in multiplayer flights. Just allows a lot more people in there. I'm not in there at the moment. I'm in testing at the bottom because I can allow certain people into this voice channel just for testing. I've got myself muted. By the way, there's a couple of things I, I want to show you here as well. If you don't want to be here and you don't want to speak, click on the mute button down here and just the mute button. If you don't want to talk, click the mute button. And Hello? It, uh, uh, sorry, just a second, David. I'll get to you in just a moment. Just just a moment. So I'm just click, going to click that. And if you don't want to hear, so I can't hear David talking. Now, David Selby is in testing this with me. He's, he's kindly volunteered. So I've clicked deafen as well. 
which means I can't hear him. Hear him. So if I click on mute, he can't hear me, but I can hear him. If I unmute, I can now speak to David Sulpy in the chat. Hello, David. Hello. Hello. So as you can hear, we can hear each other speaking. Uh, and in the sim itself, with the settings I showed you just previously in Microsoft Flight Sim, you can now see Soapy the Sailor has David behind me and myself. So imagine there is a, a number of people in the group flight, in the live multiplayer flight. Ideally, you should see all of them, but it depends how large that group in is. Sometimes you won't see everybody. That's pretty much the server playing up. Sometimes if you're on top of another player, you can't see them if you're too close to them. Thanks, David. I'll be back with you in just a moment. So I'm just going to mute and deafen David there. Oops. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. So there you see it. I can see Soapy the Sailor behind me, David. And I can also hear him. I apologise, David. I'm just proving to the uh, viewers at home that we can hear and speak to each other. Yeah, no problem. So there, there we go. So another thing I want to show you. Uh, just go to user settings again. So user settings, this cog again. Under voice and video once again. Now I've got it input mode on voice activity. So it means typically when I'm live streaming I'll just keep it on that so whatever I do and whatever's in my background so if I have a noisy house uh, and other people are talking you're going to be able, able to hear that because I've got it on constant basically. Voice activity just means constant. Push to talk. If I click that I can set a button, uh, so I'm going to record a keybind. I'm just going to use one of my keys on my keyboard. I'll use the question mark. So I click record keybind, and key bar, it's, it's question mark or forward slash, essentially. So if I want to talk now, uh, let's just go back to the Discord homepage. I'll come out of that. And David, can you hear me? You can't hear me because I've not got my push to talk button pressed down. I'm going to hold down my forward slash button. David, can you hear me? Loud and clear. I'm just demonstrating push to talk. So there you go. So that works. Typically, like I said, for yeah, me... Loud I'll, and clear. Uh, typically for me, I'll just keep it on the constant. So that's voice activity and that will be constant. Okay, so with that out of the way, thank you very much, David. I much, I much appreciate that. I'm now going to show you how you can load in flight plans on both the PC and Xbox. Okay, so let's get to the part where I show you how to load a flight plan on both PC and Xbox. I've still got Microsoft Flight Sim running in the background. You can probably hear the music, the lovely music, I find. <laughs> If you're new to Discord, from the top you've got main menus and you've got sub menus under the main menus. For example, from the top, how this channel works, you've got a couple of uh, uh, channels within there, new arrivals and house rules, that type of thing. General chat, where we do a lot of general chats just about general things. Videos and pictures, you've got screenshot of the month example. Just underneath that, you've got Fly Together. This is, like I said, during the week, people who are flying together. You've got Rossin in there at the moment. If they want to fly together and voice chat, that's where to do it. And under that, you've got Community Flights. In upcoming live streams, let's click on that. This is where I'll post the information about the upcoming live stream. You can see the live stream we did yesterday, the Community Flight for New Zealand. I'll link that down in the description. I'll put all the information about that upcoming live stream here, and it's static, so it means nobody else can ch type in this chat. Just myself and Aces, I believe, who is the moderator. And he normally doesn't, but people can leave reactions. So how do you load a flight plan? Typically, I'll link the flight plan. And also, it's probably worth mentioning here... I'll link for the Xbox users 
Soupman actually did this. So if I click on this, it will take me to that message in Discord, which is on the flight text chat. It will just zoom you to that specific flight text chat message. And actually, Soupman put down the different waypoints. So if you're on Xbox, you could type in this waypoint first. That's your des uh, departure airport. Then you can put in the other waypoints. And that's our destination airport. So just input all them into Microsoft Flight Sim on the Xbox. And you'll have the flight plan. Typically, I'll type them up myself. I didn't need to because Suitman did it for me. Fantastic. But I'll also put the flight plan for PC. I'll quickly show you this one. I've showed it in other videos. But as this is a complete guide, it's probably worth going over. I'll click on that plan file and it will download it for me. There you go, I've just got a website there about the multiplayer off group only. It doesn't matter about that. What I can do to get to this file, just click this icon, show in folder. It'll be in my downloads folder. And if I'm in flight, so I can use it, I've got it in twice in fact. Let's just delete that one I've just downloaded because I just previously downloaded it before recording this video in Flight Simulator on PC I can go to World Map at the bottom here go to More and then go to Load Save and it will give you a various options load from Xbox Cloud Storage load from this PC because that's where I've downloaded the flight plan so choose this one if you're following this guide and then I'll go to my downloads and there's the flight plan if I click on that the PLN file click on that click on open it will load in that flight plan and that's the flight we did yesterday it's quite straightforward on the PC on the Xbox it's a little bit different let's jump to that now for you Okay, so over on the Xbox, just say, for example, that all I put in my information was the flight plan. I didn't tell Xbox users what the flight plan contained. Obviously, Soupman did that for us here. If you just click on there, it will show you all the different waypoints of the flight plan. But just say, for example, I normally would put that myself, but like I said, Soupman did it. Just say all you had was the PLN file. And you're on Xbox and you're thinking, well, where's the flight plan? What, what does that contain? A good way of seeing what's in there. I've showed this before, but this is the complete guide. So I'm going to show it again. Download little nav map. I'll link the video I did of this down in the description. You don't need a powerful PC or laptop. You're likely to have a PC or laptop in your house. As long as it's running Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11. I believe Windows 7 will probably work. Just download little nav map. And once you have that PLN file downloaded somewhere on your computer that you're using, open little nav map, go to file and open flight plan. Navigate to where you've got the PLN file saved and click on open. And hey presto, that's the flight plan put into little nav map. So imagine now this is my Xbox Microsoft Flight Sim. I can look at that flight plan and I can say what's my destination airport. To see what your destination airport is, scroll in, you'll see arrows pointing down, pointing in the direction of the flight plan. So I can see that's the start because that arrow's pointing that way, that arrow's pointing that way and the other arrows will be pointing to our destination airport. I'll take a look at our destination airport, uh, arrival airport rather. I'll take a look at our destination airport, NZTL. NZTL. And there you go. And if you're typing in the a ICAO code, only one airport will come up. Every everyone has a unique code. And I click set as departure. I'll just show you a little bit of this. So if you're on the Xbox, you can just follow this. Just as an example. And destination airport is NZQN. NZQN. Queenstown. And set as arrival. 
Don't worry about the runways, it'll just point you in the general direction of the uh, airports that you're going to be flying to. And typically in the multiplayer flight, they'll tell you what runways you'll be landing at and taking off from. And etc, etc. Et so I'll just enter the next one, shall we? I'm just entering, I'll show you this custom one in a moment, my workaround for this. But I'll just enter the next airport on the route, which is NZMW. NZ. M W. And in this case, I'm just going to go add because we're adding it between our departure and destination airport. Now, if you look at that route, and you look at the route in Little Nav Map, you can see there's a custom waypoint. How do we find that? Well, we can estimate it. It's probably a way of finding out the exact locations in Little Nav Map. I'm just, I'm not going to show you that. I'll show you a quick and easy workaround. I can see it's running through this airport. So if I go back to Flight Sim, click out of that because you won't see other airports otherwise. So just click this little X here. Then it will show you the other airports. There's the airport we were looking at on Little Nav Map. And if I can estimate that, it's around about there where that curve is, where that water curves there, just below that island. It's around about... Let's just estimate that properly. It's around about here, isn't it? Oh, it is actually, because Superman actually put this in the flight plan. So I can click add there. And there you go, that's that custom waypoint. And what you would do, you would click, you would add the other airports in this flight plan. There's another airport there, another one there. And once you've done that, you'll have your flight plan on the Xbox and you can go and save that. I'll just set it up before the flight and go and fly it. So there you go, chaps. That's a complete guide for setting up and configuring multiplayer for multiplayer flights on both the Xbox and PC. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Leave your questions down below. We'll try and help you. Even better, come over to Discord because someone's always on Discord and there's lots of help helpful people there. Thanks very, thanks very much to Dave, uh, Soapy, for helping. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.